Man, this game's really cool. Kind of a miracle that I found it. I wonder how many other players played this. Wait. What? This is criminal. This is awful. There's no wonder I've never heard about it before. Nobody's played it. And you know what? This issue is all too common in the indie game space. Indie games really need better marketing. I have a couple reasons for why I even say that. One of them being, I find it really disheartening whenever these devs put so much effort into something that they make, their little art piece that they show to the world only to have it not get the recognition it deserves. And then the other one, namely, is I'm tired of looking for new games to play and just can't find any because I don't have the resources to do that. Indie games have kind of been beating the shit out of AAA games lately. They've always had heart and spirit that's completely unique to themselves and sets them apart from the stuff you'd normally pay $60 for. But now they're doing that, and they look good. <laughs> so in this way, would it not be the best idea to just make sure your name gets out there? I think especially in the modern day, AAA games have been plagued with an overwhelming sense of greed. You can pick basically any example and all of them work. Terrible usage of battle passes, egregious amounts of DLC or just DLC that doesn't net you anything, games that are unfinished because they took the wrong lessons from indie games. The list goes on and on and you get the point. I think any game, whether or not it's bad, still benefits from having passion put into it. Even games with exactly zero redeeming qualities still has that heart quality, so long as that's obvious to see, and that's basically always present in indie games. But the worst case scenario for AAA games is basically a soulless, empty husk that does nothing more than waste your time or your money. So how do we give indies the attention they deserve? Well, I have exactly two suggestions that may or may not actually help, but I do believe that they have a good chance of giving them their notoriety if the circumstances allow for them to do that. Now, that being said, it's not like indie devs haven't been trying to gain exposure through other means, but even still, I have a handful of issues when it comes to those means that I will express. So I wanna say the primary method for an indie game's exposure that devs use are press release copies, which can either be actual press release versions of games given to people to make content on, or in a much less formal way, it could be just the lead developer giving a game code out to, say, a YouTuber who plays that genre of games. You see this a lot with horror games, and in terms of it being a simple and inexpensive way to get your name out there, it seems like a pretty good shoe-in. However, I find if you come at it with any lens of scrutiny, issues start to arise pretty easily. One of them being that if you don't necessarily follow that person making the YouTube video, then obviously you're not going to see it. If you're someone who's a casual fan of horror but doesn't necessarily follow any horror YouTubers, then you're probably not going to watch the person playing the horror game. The other equally big problem with this is that if the YouTuber decides to go through the entire length of the game, then you've gotten the whole game spoiled for yourself and now there's not much of a point in playing it. Which is obviously a huge issue if you're a dev trying to make money off of a game. Other things I've seen devs do also include like posting on Twitter or Reddit, which is obviously spotty in terms of exposure just because of how those platforms work. Those are the two primary methods I can think of that devs can use for advertising. A third one being an indie game gets ridiculously popular for any number of reasons, but this is obviously a wash and doesn't apply to every indie game. Now I also mentioned two more methods that on paper should be the fixes for my issues that I have with current dev marketing. Now I will say that they're both kind of a little spotty. I don't know what all the stipulations would be for either of these methods, but nonetheless I do want to try to throw the idea out there to see if somebody wants to pursue it and really make something out of it. Alternatively, we can discuss the issues with it or the stipulations that might arise with either method. But I put a lot of stake in only two methods because to me they just seem like the quickest fixes, which should also tell you that I'm definitely not an expert in either of them. So again, I wanna try to discuss, I wanna try to talk about why this could or couldn't work. So with that being said, I kinda miss E3 and I want there to be an indie E3. Showcases for new and upcoming games isn't exactly a new concept. I mean, hell, because of E3 dissolving, suddenly all the AAA devs are coming out with their own version of their showcase. Things like the Capcom showcase and the Sony showcase and the Xbox showcase. And they get the job done for building hype for these new games. Thinking about it, it's probably on the cheaper side to produce one of these too. From all I can tell, all you have to do is set somebody in front of a screen, have them intro whatever game is coming up, and then put a trailer over it. And hey, what do you know, that's advertising. Indie games have appeared in E3 and other similar showcases, but the loss of the biggest game showcase 
venue has certainly hurt overall exposure, especially for the little guys. I don't imagine there would be a whole lot of effort you would need to put into something like an indie E3. Literally, it could be hosted by one channel, have an intro for whatever game is coming up next, and then have the devs reach out to you to provide footage of some kind. It can be a trailer or just some gameplay demo or whatever the case may be. The good thing about the indie side of this is that it doesn't necessarily have to be professional. You just have to show off something cool and something that people would want to play. From what I can tell, it seems low maintenance, and the only real barrier to entry being that you would have to get in contact with indie devs. But maybe you don't even need to take it that far. If you wanted to start one of these channels, you could just play something in the indie spectrum, have footage over it, and explain why it's cool. The good thing about having it on YouTube is, again, how low maintenance it could be. And similarly speaking, while it could be seen as a negative, the other part of YouTube sorely misused by indie devs is probably the ad space. I don't know about you, but anytime I see an ad for a game that I haven't seen before, I will definitely watch it at least once. It could go for just about anything. AAAs continue to use ad space as a low-cost method of marketing, and the ubiquity of it means that it can reach anybody just so long as they play video games. One thing I didn't touch on until now about the Indie E3 is that an issue arises when it comes to who is all looking at the channel, which, depending on how that content is portrayed, is only going to be seen by people who are looking for something to play, which isn't a bad way to go about it, but it's not everybody. It's not as many as you can grab. When it comes to Ads though, YouTube and gaming, in general, are seen as pretty inseparable at this point. It's probably the biggest category in YouTube, and the super saturation of games on YouTube and in general means that there needs to be some filtering, which I think in its own way will just filter itself. So let's break it down real fast because I'm getting rambly again. You're an indie dev who wants to show off their stuff. You decide that YouTube ads are a good way to do that. So you make a little bit of gameplay, put some voiceover, explaining some of the mechanics, and then you go to post it up. To my knowledge, the only real requirement to have ad space on YouTube is having somewhere in the throw of like $2,000 in order to do it. So immediately speaking, this is kind of a huge barrier to entry. You either need to fit it into a budget or have money already being made off of your product. But this is where its own filtering comes in. My thought for this is, is that if any one random Joe Schmo wants to put a game up for an advertisement and it's something that's lacking in quality or just isn't interesting, then they're not going to have the money to be able to do it. Obvious issues with this arise whenever it's things like the game is good but the footage for your ad is bad or something. Or improperly shows stuff off in the trailer. Or doesn't show enough, whatever the case may be. Now this is definitely the the most ill-researched part because in all of my findings I can't see I can't see what the actual stipulations are for ad space on YouTube. I understand that there is a pretty decent chance that whenever an ad comes up, it just doesn't reach somebody for whatever reason. That might be because more money needs to be thrown at it. My only real counter argument to this is that for some reason I can get random Minecraft YouTubers to show off their channel in an advertisement that I will never watch. But I mean, go them, they have the balls to make an ad, put it up on YouTube, and then just say, hey, check out my stuff. Like, that's crazy. But it goes to show you that maybe the barrier to entry isn't as high as you think it is. Or it's higher than I think it is. Honestly, I don't know. Obviously, because I haven't seen anything yet from even the bigger names in the indie space, means that something very likely is going on with this, and it just isn't feasible, because I surely can't be the only person to think of it. But what is the issue? What's going on with it? Why doesn't this work? Why isn't it the default for people? Because I really do think if the on-paper concept works as well as it should, as well as I think it should, then we should be hearing about great games left and right and not twiddling our thumbs looking for something fruitlessly. And if ads aren't the way to go, then maybe we just need an indie showcase. Maybe it's not either of those. Maybe it's something different, something I'm just not thinking of. But let's go ahead and get a discussion going. I want to see some points or some ideas that I'm not thinking about. And ultimately, I just want to play some cool games. I want to see these people's projects and lifebloods get the attention that they deserve. I've played a lot of indie games that I consider to be some all-time favorites of mine, and a lot of the times I found them was pure happenstance. Now, with all that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Drop some comments down and let's get to theorizing on how we can make these ideas fully fledged. Also, like and subscribe and join the Patreon, that'd be cool too. Okay, bye.